Welcome to the latest in our series of daily devotions for Easter week in which we're considering some of the people who were at the heart of the first Easter and today we're going to consider the disciples who met with the risen Lord Jesus on the evening of the first Easter day, focusing particularly on the account in John chapter 20. John tells us that the disciples with, as we shall discover tomorrow, God willing, the exception of Thomas, were met together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews and I'm sure wondering what happened next. It had been a tumultuous week. Just a, pre a week previously, Jesus had ridden triumphantly into Jerusalem, fated by the crowds as the Messiah, the one long promised as the Saviour and Redeemer of is Israel. Yet by Friday, he'd been nailed to a cross and left to die. Now, today, they'd discovered that the tomb was empty and Mary Magdalene had met with the risen Lord Jesus. Jerusalem would still have been packed with pilgrims from near and far gathered for the Passover festival, and the atmosphere would have been febrile. Having seen what a combination of the crowds, the religious authorities and a Roman governor more interested in saving his own skin had done to Jesus, no wonder then that they sat together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews. With the news that the tomb was empty, if the mob didn't rise against them, the religious authorities almost certainly would and the one person who they'd come to rely on in such situations had been crucified, dead and buried three days previously. And it's into that situation that Jesus comes and greets the assembled disciples with the ancient greeting, Shalom. A greeting that would now have a whole new depth of meaning for them. We tend to think of Shalom as peace or peace be with you, but its true meaning was and is far more than just peace in the sense of an absence of stress, for its Old Testament meaning was that of well-being, well-being in all its fullness. And that well-being that Shalom implies is so much more than our modern psychobabble understanding of what well-being means, for it's a gathering together of all the blessings of the kingdom of God, of all that's good under the gracious hand of God in bringing the kingdom of God into being through his death and resurrection, Jesus makes that greeting a reality. The shalom of that first Easter evening is the complement, the completion of Jesus Christ. It is finished or it's accomplished, uttered as, he, uttered as he died on the cross. Through Jesus, the true shalom can now be experienced. No wonder then that John records that they were overjoyed. As Jesus stands amongst them, Despite all the fear and uncertainty that surrounded them, the disciples were able to know the perfect peace that comes from knowing the reality of the risen Lord Jesus. And the same is true for us today. We're only able to know that perfect peace, the peace which passes all understanding, that ultimate well-being that comes from knowing that we're made right with God when we meet with and know the risen Lord Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. For without that personal encounter with the risen Lord Jesus. Our relationship with God remains distant and impersonal because as anyone who's lost a loved one knows it's impossible to have a living, vibrant, loving relationship with someone who's dead. And this brings us to the very heart of our faith as Christians. Jesus, who was crucified to pay the price for our sins, who was raised to life again so that we should know that even death has no power over those who put their faith and trust in Jesus then we too can know the same risen Lord Jesus, just as the disciples did on that first Easter day. We can know that same peace, that same shalom. The Passover festival commemorates the freeing of God's people from slavery in Egypt, marked by the sacrifice of the Passover lamb. Easter to the Christian marks the freeing of God's people, that's us, from slavery to sin. And with that freedom, comes the peace of knowing that sins are forgiven and that our fellowship with our Father in heaven is restored. In the troubled world that we live in, we need that peace, the peace that comes from knowing the risen Lord Jesus more than ever before. That peace is the free gift of God to all who believe that Jesus died for our sins and has been raised to life again, a sign that his offering of himself had been accepted by his Father in heaven. Of course, we can discover the risen Lord Jesus at any time of the year. 
But it's at Easter that the reality of what Jesus accomplished for us as he died on the cross is made real. As we reflect on God's love shown to us in Jesus' outstretched arms on the cross and the joy of the resurrection made real on Easter Sunday. The question for each one of us is, do you know the peace and joy of the risen Lord Jesus in your heart today? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to pay the price for our sins. Father, we pray that we would know afresh the joy of meeting with the risen Lord Jesus today. And Father, we pray for those who have yet to know and to discover that joy. Father, we pray that by the power of your Spirit, they too would come to know that peace which passes all understanding. In Jesus' name we pray.